Welcome to May Favorites. This video is going to be pretty light on product suggestions and recommendations. It's much heavier on sort of lifestyle things, reading material or suggestions, and music. I think because I had done that, I have something in my eye. You know when something's like sitting on your contact lens? This video, this is like also the second time starting this video. I feel very like distracted and ungrounded, but Hopefully I'll get into the swing as I move through the video. I had done that summer beauty recommendations video, so if you want to hear more about the sorts of products that I've been using for skincare, makeup, body care, beauty, I feel like that's a better resource because when I went to sort of pick up things to show in this video what I had been using during May, it's pretty much everything I talked about in that video. So let's focus on some other fun things. I do have some product stuff though, so let's start with that. The first thing that I'll talk about is an experience related to beauty products, and it happened at the very end of May, but still technically May, Memorial Day weekend, I went to New York and I had a gua sha facial featuring Varid Organics skincare products at Great Jones Spa in New York. I like that I now have a very high quality skincare facial option on the west coast at International Orange and now on the east coast at Great Jones Spa in New York. I have tried various facials in and around Boston and they've all been sort of lackluster especially for the price and so I feel like New York is where it's at for sure on the east coast. So in addition to the two Varid Organics products that I've been using and loving for a while now, the anti-aging treatment face oil and the herb infused toner, I basically want like all of her other products. Very high on my list are the, she does like a sugar scrub, I'm blanking on what it's called, I think it's called like the citrus foaming scrub, and the cacao vanilla mask, and her herbal oil cleanser, and her eye treatment. Those are like the next things I'm going to slowly add to my life as I use up other stuff. Also, it's so beneficial to see an esthetician uh, because I feel like it kind of realigns and re-clarifies your skincare routine and how you're taking care of your skin and you kind of learn about your skin through hearing a professional sort of diagnose it and talk about it. I kind of have like new ways that I'm approaching my skin. Nothing, you know, hugely groundbreaking or anything, but just in terms of how much I exfoliate, how I pair masks with exfoliating, and different types of masks, and all of that is much more refined moving forward. So I think I might just do an updated sort of skincare philosophy video. Also, the esthetician that I had, I think she's one of the head estheticians at Great Jones Spa. She gifted me with a rose quartz gua sha plate which was just so super kind of her. I believe she does sell these, but it was a very beautiful gift to me. Um, she let me choose between rose quartz and green jade. I actually already have a green jade face roller, so I opted for the rose quartz. It just felt so beautiful and lovely. I am going to be doing a whole video showing how to use these sorts of tools, crystals and beauty routines. I was sent some things by the crystal company Energy Muse, so it's a whole forthcoming thing. But the very brief teaser is that I am loving this. In fact, I think I kind of like the process of using this on my face versus the jade roller. They're actually very different. I feel the sort of experience and the effect that they give. So more to come. One other little skincare product, I have really been liking the Uma Deeply Clarifying Face Oil. Now, this is incredibly intense. A one time I slathered like my whole face in it when my face was feeling really sort of like congested. And it was like, really intense. I feel like I could smell it on my face for like two days after. So someone gave me a tip I think on Instagram to kind of only use it in targeted areas which I actually think is a much better tip than putting this all over your face. But if you are having congested areas of your face, like for me it generally will happen like around my nose and my chin, sometimes on my jawline, this will kind of like clear up your skin very quickly. Um, at least it does on me. I find that if my skin is in like SOS mode, this is very helpful. I really do recommend, um, especially with something like this, I, I think you'd have a hard time going through a full bottle of it, which is like 
why I like that they do this. Um, you can buy the set of all the little sample oils, which I think is really nice. Um, only a couple of other makeup things that are distinct from my summer beauty recommendations. I have really been liking the Au Natural eye pencil that came in the Beauty Heroes makeup box because I've really been liking sort of messily putting this on my lash line, not today, I did do sort of like more traditional Mercedes makeup today, but I've been liking to do a smudgy line with this and then taking a brush, this is the Wayne Goss 07, sort of in lieu of an angled liner brush. This has been working well. This is actually, I think, in concept a lip brush, but I really like it for sort of detailed eyeliner or smudging into one of the lash lines work. Although I sort of am in the market for an angled eye brush to smudge liner in and then trace with shadow and kind of draw out and do a wing that way. My only thing with brown eye pencils is that when smudged out, they tend to lighten up a lot. So nothing ever stays like sort of this truly cocoa color on my lash line. If any of you have recommendations for like a dark brown eye pencil that sort of stays like a cocoa color on the lid, I would be curious. This does stay darker on me than the Alima Coffee Eye Pencil, which doesn't really work for me. It just gets way too light and kind of like sable brown, and I want something that's like a rich cocoa brown. So I love the way this swatches. It does lighten up on my lids, but I've been liking it a lot. I also wanted to give a rave to my Rodin Lip Pencil in Billy on the Bike to complement the lipstick. I really do think um, it's a very, very nice pairing, and if you're looking to sort of treat yourself to a lip splurge, I think if you found a color in this four color range and got yourself the lip liner and lipstick, you would feel very special every time you use them. Um, because the lipstick is sort of quite watercolor, not really sheer, but they are they're not like a full coverage matte lipstick. I find that pairing it with the lip liner really does help with the color popping and longevity and all of that. So the other quick thing, this I'm not sure if this is like a favorite per se, but I did get my Sephora birthday gift. You could pick between this little Tarte Duo this year or I believe it's a Caudalie skincare set. Um, I'm just not really interested. So the little Tarte Duo comes with special edition colors of a blush and this Tartist creamy matte lip paint. So I am actually wearing the lip paint today and I think I like it. I think I like the color, especially for a look like this, just kind of like done and polished. I don't love the texture of it, but I'm very new to wearing it. Um, it doesn't dry down at all. Actually, I've had it on for about an hour and it feels okay right now, but this is like potentially a favorite. I'm trying it out and I do really enjoy the color. The blush doesn't work on me, kind of like a Tarte Exposed. I don't know, it just it oxidizes on me. I'm extremely picky with blush, um, just not for me. But the Creamy Matte Lip Paint and Birthday Suit is a potential favorite. So I have some Schmitz deodorant back in my life and this is a very big favorite. And it has been for a while. Now, take my deodorant recommendations with a grain of salt because deodorant is incredibly individual. I know that this really works for some people and really doesn't work for a lot of other people. Um, for me, it's the best all natural, non aluminum drugstore type of deodorant that I've found. Um, it does have baking soda, it doesn't irritate me at all personally, and I find it really good at odor control. In the summertime, I really like the bergamot and lime scent, and then in the winter, I like the cedarwood one. The only downside is that you do have to spread on with your fingers, and it kind of adds an additional hand washing step in the morning. I've never tried the stick, I uh, I don't honestly I don't really like have an interest I mean maybe I do I just really like the formula of this and it just works in the summer I also like to layer um, a sort of liquid spray deodorant over top I'm just finishing this up it's called balance and it, this was a little gift one time when I was at International Orange so I really am just showing this for the concept pairing an equivalent of this would be the RL Linden uplifting deodorant spray or you could layer with something like the Living Libations Poetic Pits in the summer I find that layering deodorants is really the best 
it's one of those things along with chemical sunscreens I'm just not comfortable using chemical deodorants it's not that I have you know I don't think that they're the devil I don't think that they're awful or anything just for me I think we all have our own comfort zones with products that we prefer to keep formulated with alternative ingredients and so sunscreen and deodorant are two that are important to me to keep um, as clean as possible I guess so I love that combo I do also still have la vanilla in rotation and I like that too a random favorite but I love this product this is the intelligent nutrients certified organic hand sanitizer this is my second bottle of this I am also trying to use up the Tammy Fender hand sanitizer which was a product I regret buying I don't like it it's sitting on my desk at work I just don't like it at all uh, but I feel bad wasting it this is so much better I love this I keep this in my bag that I take to work and like on the subway and stuff it smells like vanilla lemon it I don't know I just really it makes sanitizing your hands like very enjoyable I know that's kind of weird it does have alcohol as the sort of primary active antiseptic but it's just really nice I love it highly recommend I also really like using the baby Gannix individually packaged hand wipes I keep those at work and I will wipe down like my desk at work and mouse and keyboard and all of that like not quite daily a couple times a week I'll do like a wipe down with those wipes and I really like those and I know it seems sort of wasteful that they're individually packaged but I've just had such bad success with buying a pack of wipes and having them dry out before I can get to the end of them like the EO wipes they just like they dry out so quickly so with that I'm kind of willing to get the extra packaging I guess I do have a fragrance favorite and this is another Varid product her formulations are just they're so incredible and they've been rocking my world lately she sent me samples of her three perfumes that she does she does a signature perfume a blue violet perfume and I think it's called deep citron and the signature is my favorite this little vial is so perfect to take to work and I just put it on my pulse points and behind my ear like throughout the day I will say with her fragrances they're not very long lasting on the skin because they don't have any of the ingredients that would make scent linger on the skin like that they're very cleanly formulated from sort of like an herbal perspective but I really like having it on the go so that I can just kind of use it throughout the day um, inhale them very similar I guess in concept to something like the Lotus Way anointing oils that's how I consider this placement in my life it's just a product that I take with me and use throughout the day. Jasmine, rose, deep, intense, intoxicating, like a deep floral. I think it's probably gonna smell different on everybody. She also does a signature body oil that I would love to add to my life at some point. I also feel that if you wanted like a multi-purpose product, you could get one of her body oils and then just decant it into like a roller ball and use it throughout the day. So this product is sort of like a little bridge, I guess, between beauty products um, and lifestyle products because it is it's a hair clip which is a little bit random I've been so obsessed with these little tortoise shell French made hair clips from J crew I do people still use these I definitely do I think hair claws are maybe sort of passe but I had never invested in like a high quality tortoise shell hair clip I've always used like cheapy ones like goodie brand or whatever and they break and they're just you know they look kind of like not that refined um, these are like ten dollars a piece these little ones anyway but I absolutely love them I like to do kind of like a just pull the front part of my hair back with these and also if I'm doing a top knot I like to twist my hair around a ponytail and then clip it in the back and I find that that helps prevent like twisting my hair up too much in hair elastics that cause can can that can contribute to breakage and things like that so I've just been very happy with these little hair clips I mean it's like the little things in life I wanted to give a huge rave to the little barn apothecary jasmine and olibanum soy candle this is very well burned and well loved by me I definitely intend to try the other scents that they do I think they do two or three other ones so if you are a jasmine lover this is a beautiful beautiful light 
clean finish jasmine smelling candle. I don't really know what Olibanum smells like, but this is basically like a jasmine candle. Um, affordable, long lasting, clean burn, gorgeous like jar that I definitely intend to repurchase. I got mine off the Pettivore shop, but uh, I'm sure that you can probably get them elsewhere. Okay, so the other lifestyle thing I was going to show you, but I'm actually wearing it. <laughs> so let's see. And it is this little, it's basically like a yoga bra. Let me try and maybe scoop up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Sorry, I, I'm really not like intending to like flash you my chest area but just to show you the bra it's kind of like a high neck with this cutout key and it just comes down to about here i absolutely love this bra it's like first of all it's super super comfortable um i was inspired to pick up a, a yoga bra or add some yoga bras to my life after jess from stark mentioned that and i'm like i have like s sports bras that i get at target but I've never had like a cute yoga bra really, or I have like cheapy ones that I've gotten at Forever 21 just to wear with like backless tanks in the summer, things like that. But this is a really nice mix of like functional and also sort of like stylish or can add like some interest to an outfit. It's the brand Zella and I got it on Nordstrom. I'll, add, I'll have a link down below if you wanna go check it out, but yeah, I really love it. I have mine in a size small, which is pretty true to size. Sometimes if I buy smalls in sports bras, they can feel too compressed. This does not compress as much as like a small in another size would be. Uh, but yeah, I kind of wanna get like another one or like another color, I'm just... Okay, on to a couple of media suggestions. For any of you that are not on Vert Nouveau, the Facebook group that I moderate with Jess, I pulled a couple of my personal favorite reads from the last month because, and these are all things that have been posted and are being discussed on there, but I wanted to like mention them on here for those of you that are not on Facebook for, uh, you know, life balance reasons, which I totally get. I freaking hate Facebook, to be honest. Some of, two of my favorite reads this month were a piece from, this is the Old Atlantic. This is the May 2017, the one with Alec Baldwin. That was actually a really good read too. Alec Baldwin as Donald Trump on SNL. Hearing about the whole process behind that was really interesting. But this is the piece I wanted to point you in the direction of. It is How Online Shopping Makes Suckers of Us All by Jerry Usim. Um, I think that this, you can read this for free online, so I'll link it down below. Really exceptional read from sort of a consumer rights perspective, just disentangling all of the behavioral science and big data and economists that have basically just started exploiting human psychology to get you to buy more on the internet. All of the algorithms that go into um, prices not being stable and price competition and everything to just get you to become a good online consumer sort of uh, peels the veil back a little bit. They end the article with talking about movements, sort of like the radical transparency pricing movement that places like Everlane are doing. So they interviewed a woman who works for truthinadvertising.org, which I guess is like a nonprofit. And they're basically like, how do you deal with like all of the problems in online marketing and shopping? She was like, I basically stopped shopping like for fun or for excess. And I was like, huh, what a novel idea. We stop shopping for leisure and really reevaluate like what we need and like, I guess want, but it, I mean, obviously like I'm sitting here talking about products, so I'm not trying to sit here and say like, we should all just like stop shopping completely. I mean, it's such a nuanced topic. Anyway, yes, very, very great read, highly recommend. And then it's funny too, both of these reads I feel sort of are follow-up thoughts to the anti-haul that I did. Maybe I, it's time for me to do another one of those sometime soon. Because I talked about just sort of consumer rights and excess shopping in that. And then I really took a hit at the luxury supplement industry, which has, I mean, at this point it's like beyond just an irritation. I just think it's flat out like irresponsible in a lot of ways. I 
have so much reverence and respect for herbal medicine and I believe herbs are incredibly helpful to us throughout different segments of our lives but the way that they are being packaged and marketed and sold to people as just like hey you need ashwagandha right now hey you need rhodiola right now hey you need this expensive concoction of like bee pollen and all this stuff it's so much more nuanced and bio individualized than that there was a piece in the new york times someone else posted this on verit nouveau and i was very glad she did it's how amanda chantal bacon perfected the celebrity wellness beauty industry by molly young this was published on may 25th i did print it out and read it at work and there's a really good, there was a really good thread of discussion going on in Verit Nouveau about it. I mean, it's a very cynical, critical look at the luxury supplement industry, specifically Amanda Chantal Bacon. Chantal Bacon is the person behind Moon Juice and all of the dust supplements and the Moon Juice Empire cookbook and all of that. Really just highlights a lot of, a lot of the, uh, again, sort of psychology that goes on behind the scenes because it's like they're trying to sell so much more than like the product itself it's sort of like if you take this you're going to become a certain person or you're going to have a different kind of life or you're going to be happier or you're going to attract the partner of your dreams or your kids are going to be xyz way i think that it's like a lot of that goes on subconsciously with the marketing of this whole like lifestyleism it's just this I don't even know like how to keep articulating how class-based consumption driven this whole lifestyle movement has become and there's a lot of money to be made there and so I think whatever that we can do as conscious consumers to become aware of what's being sold to us what our unconscious biases might be towards these sorts of products these sorts of lifestyles these sorts of strivings and yearnings um, is only to our benefit to again come back to your own like intuition and your own power and your own ability to discern what's best for you yeah let me know if you read either of these pieces be curious to hear your thoughts um, it was a fantastic music month for me not really in terms of dance music but I got to see Carrie Chandler DJ live and it was so good oh my gosh you guys he's like a legend in the house underground house dance community Community, and it was just honestly next level. Kendrick Lamar, there were three tracks off his new album that I really love. Feel I think is my favorite and that'll probably be the one that I include on my playlist. I also liked Lust and Love of course. Okay I made a mental note to also save the hard copy New Yorker that this piece was in but I think I have already recycled it. As you guys know, probably, I am very into jazz. I think I talked about John Coltrane maybe last month. There was a piece in a recent New Yorker, I'll link it down below, featuring a jazz vocalist. So I'm much more into instrumental jazz than vocal jazz. But this New Yorker piece highlighted um, a young woman, I think she's in her mid-twenties, named Cecil Salvant. I don't know, they're calling her like the jazz voice of a generation and you know, similar to someone like Billie Holiday or Nina Simone. And I read the piece, my mom actually pointed it out to me. Sometimes I count on her to be like, make sure that you read this in the New Yorker this week because as anybody that gets the New Yorker knows it comes every week and it's really <laughs> it's hard to keep up. So I read the piece and then I went online and I watched some live performances of her. And it's very, very incredible. She's very inspiring, her voice is impeccably beautiful. So if you're into vocal jazz, I highly recommend um, that read and listening to her. I downloaded another Miles Davis album too. Kind of Blue has been my favorite. Um, I listen to it like nonstop all winter. I just downloaded ESP, which is I think a later composition. I'm trying to remember. It was like in the mid 1960s when ESP came out and I don't know when Kind of Blue came out. My favorite track that just had jumped out to me immediately from ESP is 81 so I'll include that on my playlist. Okay last track I want to mention is a track from Erica Badu off her live album which came out in 1997 the same time Baduism came out. Erica Badu was a foundational part of my music evolution when I was a teenager. I've loved her since Baduism came out. The only song I ever really paid attention to off the live album was Tyrone, which I've loved for a while. Okay, how did I never listen to Yayo 
that track is like life for where I am at right now. So Yeyo means mother in Maasai, um, which I think is the language they speak in Kenya. And so the song is basically about motherhood. The energy that she is channeling in her live performance of that song, like it's giving me chills right now just to talk about. In particular, when she says the lyrics, We'll see the suns in the east and the moon reflects like the knowledge and wisdom I manifest if you wanna go. She sings that line twice. And when she hits the word manifest, something like opens up. It's just like the most, one of the most beautiful musical experiences that I've had in a while. I know it's, that's like hyper specific, but that is also how I listen to music. It, sometimes it will be literally like a note or a bar or a line or a very small part of a song that just like hits something. I don't know if it's like an energy release that happens or a vibration that it hits or, what but yes yayo has done that for me this month and it's been on heavy rotation repeat wow i haven't rambled about music that much in a while that's all i have for you today i feel like i definitely found my groove i feel like i get into my groove like halfway through the videos you know it's like you always start so like stiff and awkward and stuff and then by the end i'm like oh now i just want to keep talking <laughs> but I do have to go. I'm actually DJing a gig later today. So I hope you enjoyed hearing about all of these products. Everything will be listed and linked below. Would love to hear your favorites for the month of May. And I guess I'll just see you guys soon. I'm gonna try and get a video up midweek. I really like doing two videos a week. It's just a big hustle to do it. But if I can, I will. I'll see you guys in my next one soon. <laughs> Bye.